You can see in this tank it's got a sand goby. See them in the background there. And they go and just dig in the sand and keep the sand nice and clean, which is really lovely. But the disadvantage with having sand gobies is that very often you'll find that there's no sand on this side of the tank. And then there's tons of sand on that side of the tank because they're always moving the sand around. So that really is an advantage for keeping the sand clean. But sure is a disadvantage as far as the way the tank looks. There he is there. So he's a pretty shy little fellow now that I've got the camera sitting at his face. But he'll go constantly digging in the sand, uh, moving the sand, keeping the sand clean. Um, but it, he does rely on there being enough nutrients in the sand to keep him alive. So you need to feed your tank quite well to make sure there's enough nutrients in the tank to support him. Otherwise they don't tend to last for that long. You tend to get six months out of them until they pretty much starve, which is unfortunate. So keep your other fish fat, keep plenty of food in the tank and then they'll do really well and they'll move your sand around, they'll keep your sand clean, they're a very interesting fish to watch but um, feeding enough to keep these guys healthy is an issue because that means that it's going to sort of challenge your system and tend to run a higher phosphate level so make sure that you're using a good phosphate remover such as Fosban if you are actually keeping these animals but they're worth it because they're extremely interesting guys providing the tanks fed enough to grow the microorganisms to keep it alive otherwise it'll just get skinny and died. It doesn't work in these low nutrient tanks. It's a very interesting, very beautiful fish, very busily cleaning your sand all the time, sifting it through for any bits of nutrients, any bits of fish waste. considered hard to keep because they don't really feed on introduced food.